Deborah Doctor from Disability Rights California, and I want to start off by saying that uh, my organization, my board, is not questioning the good intentions of the, this author or the previous authors. Um, we believe that you have absolutely good intentions. We are not here out of concern for somebody like Brittany Menard and her loving family. That's not where our concern is. Our concern is for the people for whom Adult Protective Services exists, for the people for whom the elder abuse and protection penalties exist, and for the fact that, and for the fact that 90% of elder abuse is done by family members. So unless you believe that no family member ever acts out of bad intentions, I'm asking you to think about those people too. I have to say this is the lowest cost I've ever seen assigned to any bill that had anything to do with the Department of Health Care Services, so I wish my own bills carried this kind of cost estimate. I think the cost estimate is so low because there's no proactive effort costed out for the state to do anything to find out what's going on. Just as in Oregon, in Oregon the data we have is not complete because it's entirely voluntary. They, what you know from Oregon is what the voluntary reporters have told you. Uh, I think it's uh, not realistic to think that every single case is going to somehow, all the data is going to arrive in some state office without any outreach being done. Um, the bill lacks many protections. I know more have been added, but they're primarily for physicians who are amazingly protected from every possible wrongdoing, which is astounding to me. If you want to use Oregon statistics, you'll see that there is doctor shopping. One doctor has prescribed about 10% of the prescriptions. You'll see that several people who got the drug in 2012 because they had less than six months to live, took it in 2014. We have, some of us are old enough to remember the wonderful actress Valerie Harper, from, who got a terminal diagnosis in 2013 and is performing in a stage show now. So please don't comfort yourselves with the idea that it's always possible to predict death within that number of days and hours. And you'll see more people in Oregon, there has been an increase in people with ALS who are getting this drug. And that um, is a disease where it is even more difficult to predict what a date of death. So I'm just saying that that's one of the holes here. Um, the people, the physicians and the witnesses, witnesses who could be somebody off the street who could have met the person 30 seconds before, as long as the person, the patient provided identification, they are given the responsibility in this bill to judge that the person, the patient is of sound mind. With what training do they do that? What kind of a responsibility are we giving people who might be, on the one hand, complete strangers, or on the other hand, heirs, one person can be an heir and have a vested interest in this. So these are just some of the pitfalls. I want to close by saying that people with disabilities, including seniors with disabilities, don't have full access to health care now. We have had three clients in the last year with developmental disabilities who have been denied medical treatments because of their developmental disability, stated that way. And contrary with respect to the author, what was said the other day, this bill does not uh, exclude people with developmental disabilities from being able to use this bill if they also have a diagnosis of death within six months. So I'm going to stop now and respectfully ask you to think of the people who are the least able and the most vulnerable to possible coercion or exploitation. Thank you.